Hello and welcome to the Mother Grid Studio. My name is Marcus Wilmsman and in this Q&A live stream we want to talk about the brand new desk dough fixture that was presented by Stops and Mobs a couple of days ago. And for that I invited a few guests which I would like to present you now. We have Bianca Mischinger and Matt Finke from Stops and Mobs in the upper left. In the upper right we have Nick Evers from St. Robo. Um, next is Tillmann Schumacher from Prefocus and in the down right corner we have Chris Rocket, Chris Glator. And those three were first hand users who had a chance to, to get a grip on the desk dough uh, from, from the first prototypes on. And I am interested in uh, getting to know their uh, experiences they made with desk dough. And perhaps we can start with Nick. Nick, hello. Um, hello. What were your first thoughts when you had uh, desk dough in your hands for the first time? Um, it's a it's a it's a nice it's a nice um, um, toy. It it invites you to to play. Um, you you got thousand ideas running around, and you 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 can't stop uh, thinking about what things you can do. And um, it's uh, yeah, like a toy. At least uh, the main thing is like a toy. Play with it. And did you did you get the idea immediately, or did it take you a while before you realized? Oh, okay, it's uh, much more than I thought from the first uh, from the beginning on. The the idea, um, I think you get quite fast. But but to check out what possibilities you have, you you need a little while, and you you figure out ah okay this like that and like that, and so the the. The understanding of it grows and grows and grows as longer you play with it. Okay, Tillman, yes. what what were your your first experience with desk dough? Yeah, the first experience was uh, um, at uh, Stops and Mops, and uh, they showed us the the, the little toy, um, and it was like, oh, for that I'm here, <laughs> and then I start to beginning uh, to 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 recognize which. Um, which impact uh, this fixture got? Uh, it's it's a it's a little little uh, box. And you can do so much with it. Um, it was impressive. After five minutes, it was oh, okay. Let me think about it. You can do it like this and that way. And um, yeah, you have to play a lot with it. Um, you can play a lot with it. It's like oh no, wait, we can do much more. Do it this way. Do it that way. Um, yes, it's it's a great, great toy, but you have to bring in some time. Okay. Chris, uh, do you agree with uh, Nick and Tillman? Yes, that's right. <laughs> Full. Um, yeah, the point is, no, um, you have, that's, yeah, you can say that's the first digital uh, lighting fixture. No? All the other fixtures, what we had, um, DL, uh, DML from high end, uh, from elation, all that other things that that, that was a beamer, no? uh, a moving beamer with with a medium picker uh, with a medium server inside. Um, but you now the different to that box here is you know, that it's a, a real engine with so many informations inside, and you can use it directly as a as a lamp, as a normal lamp, and you can play around and you have not all the small problems with all the median stuff, what you have in the median server, alpha channels and all the things. So it's easier for everybody to do a new way to make some lights. Okay. Yeah. Dear viewers, uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to put them in the uh, live stream chat, in the live chat at YouTube or in Facebook. I would prefer YouTube to be honest, because then I only have to check one live chat. Feel free to ask your questions. We will also have a hands-on uh, after uh, we after the discussion with Nick Tillman and Chris. And now, uh, Matt and Bianca, what what were your experiences? You presented uh, the desk dough to a couple of lighting designers before officially uh, launching it. What did people say when they saw it for the first time? Um, I can agree with uh, the three of them. It was quite the same um, customer journey, you can say that pretty everybody showed when they were here in our studio. So um, while telling somebody and showing the picture the first time, it's like, oh, you're using a, a digital projector to represent a, a lighting picture. 
So that that's it. Okay, I got it. I've seen this before. And I got to say, you know, big hands up and big applause for, for high-end systems and all the others. We're not the first who, who done a, a digital lighting fixture. Of course, these were really the early movers. But we're not saying we're the first. We're saying it's the first of its kind. And that's a very important part in that small sentence saying it's the first of its kind digital lighting picture and it's not a media server it is not integrated it doesn't comes with the lighting source it's external you know it's just a, it's a it's an external device which is pretty tiny and it's not a media server and so for everybody seeing the uh, the presentation here in our studio and while having a hands-on it was like it was not love at first sight it was like understanding okay this is what it does and then it's like you know it it really goes up because i guess we done at least we done one thing right while, while inventing this is keeping the focus keeping the focus always on lighting not to think about video how video playback works because any lighting programmer any designer any operator around the world what their tool of choice is is the desk itself so the desk is how you manipulate your beam your lighting fixture your movement so what comes is you have an artist on stage or you, you have any kind of show so you have an idea in your mind, which is an artistic idea, a picture in your mind that you want to bring out. So you don't want to think in video, how do I animate this first? And then how do I play it back? No, you want to do it instantly. I mean, when you, when you think of beams and how you operate beams, if you think of that you want to animate them all in like an animation studio, so think in video wise, that's a long term process. But if you go for your desk, it's like cue by cue. You hear a sound, you want to have a snap on the snare and you want to have something softer bumping, you know, on the bass drum coming in. But then you want to have some accents going onto the guitar. That's, that's the way you work with a desk, not what you work with a video program at all. And this is so, so important that we thought of this, this kind of device is missing. That's a missing link that I've never seen. And that's why we build it. Okay. And we already have... Uh... One user here who uh, used Desktop in, in a real production is Tillman. Tillman, uh, did that work well with the production that you made with Desktop? Yes, it uh, worked very well. We just programmed it one, one or two days uh, before in our studio, and then uh, we, go to, uh, we went to Hamburg um, to have a, um, a concert over there, uh, a streaming concert. And uh, yes, just plug it in, and it was the same like... Um, we did in the studio we just uh, adapt some stuff and it was great it was really really great okay yeah. were there any no. were there any advantages equipment wise that you only needed uh, four trucks instead of eight or something like that yeah we just uh, drove uh, with a normal um, um, vehicle so uh, we, we doesn't have so much uh, equipment with us um, no it was just this little desk it was uh, i think it wasn't the right one it was uh, a previous version and um, we um, plug it into the uh, projector and it works immediately fine as it should okay yeah and when when i launched my uh, my videos uh, that i did with matt and bianca to uh, to give some information about desco i think people did not really get uh, the point that you could uh, uh, edit the effects in 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 real time um And also uh, the and also the term digital lighting fixture was uh, was a matter of very very long uh, discussions. So, uh, what do you think about the term digital lighting fixture? Is it one, Chris? What would you say? Uh, the desktop, yeah, sure. Um, I think the big point is that that's a new step for we, you, we can say at a moment or at first time. For media server, no, we have some media server with notch inside, Unreal stuff, and all those things. But you need, no, what, what uh, Matt explained, you need so many steps to have the effect on the beamer, no, and with that one, you have a hardware that's fixed for all the effects. What's inside, no, everything is in, and you can you can play and play and play, and you, every five minutes you have another look and say, okay, preset, 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 preset. So you have so many. Layer, uh, not, not, not layers, you have so many ways to do some things and that is, that is a big point. Yeah. Okay. Um, Nick, do you also agree with uh, Chris? 
Um, yes, at, at least uh, to, uh, to come back to the question, a digital picture. Yes, it is for sure. I agree. Uh, it's it's very digital, but in the same way, it's it's kind of um, analog because you 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 model so much. Thank you, Nick. That, that's an important point you think. That's why we call ourselves the Bean Bakery. You know, yeah. that's like a hilarious thing we built up there. You know. While saying that's so organic, but that's what we when you when you really point out, you know, saying it is like you want to play with something with your desk has been used to, but you wanna you wanna manipulate the beams in a very natural way. You don't want to have like you know there's like three steps given, there's like ten or fifteen gobos, and the way you manipulate, you hear a sound and you want to bend the beam, you want to distort it, you wanna you wanna have a hand on that. That's pretty organic on the other side, and that was very very important because when you get rid of the uh, limitations that mechanics gives you yeah and, and a lot of mechanics anyway then why not be very organic on this side using the digital possibilities here yeah, to leave these boundaries behind okay yeah oh uh, the, the picture freeze no no okay Okay, and the, to the lighting designers, do you already have any plans uh, for upcoming productions if they are possible after the COVID crisis again? Do you have any uh, ideas for, for lighting designs which were not possible before Death Dome? Um, I, I think we all uh, thought directly how to, to use it in, in the next design or how to, how to design a show with this opportunity in... in um, taking over the main part for the show. I think we all have ideas, and now we 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 need a show. <laughs> I, so. We all need show. <laughs> yeah. Any other any other yeah, remarks the, on that, Tillman? The next show is coming up in um, I think mid or end of February. Um, also with a desto, um, probably with more than one desto, um, and only with destos. So um, we will see. Um, when it's done, I will um, yeah launch it to you. Okay, and Chris, you're the last in line. Any plans concerning desk, though? Uh, yes, sure. Uh, we had you no know, for for example on last year for Rock and Ring with Ray, you know, the idea to use desk to make the stage bigger than it is. No, that's uh, that was the first step, but uh, you no know, Corona. Or COVID uh, cancel that. <laughs> yeah, and for the future, so many. No, you. The point is now that it's the same as with with any other pictures. That's uh, with new ideas. No, you need to play with it, and then you can figure out uh, what you can do with that and new ideas. No, for example, you can you can use all stuff from the Catalyst uh, server, the the mirror for for the Beamer. Uh, to use that one on a, on a different uh, beamer, a bigger one or whatever, uh, or a newer one, bigger beamer, um, to have more features, no? Yes, you can use also uh, normal uh, moving... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, no problem. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, no, also, you, you can play around with so many odd things, no? Um, for example, with the new... Um, Mirror from Play, Play Parky too, um, so you have a, a newer. You can create newer rooms. You can create uh, so many other ways to to use that desktop, no? With new stuff, with old stuff together, um, and that is a big point. It's a, a very good tool to create new stuff, and I think that is an important thing. Okay, is there anything that you're missing and that you told Matt and Bianca? Hey, very nice, but uh, could you add? Uh possibilities X, Y, Z? But for now, I think so. It's uh, so many, uh, you have so many choices and you have so many things uh, um, up there that we are not at the end till now. So at this point, it was just a little, um, uh, just a little uh, stuff to change, but nothing, nothing big. Okay. There's already very, very many ideas inside. So, so I, I didn't, I'm, I'm not at the point that I already reached a border where I would like to say, oh, let's go over the, the let's go to the next step. Um, I, I'm working on getting all the ideas 
checked out at the moment. Okay. Yeah. If uh, the audience has no more questions to Nick, Tillman and Chris, I would say we can go to the next point and, and get a little hands-on session by Matt and Bianca. Are there any questions? Now is your time to write them into the live chat. We have some questions already, which will be answered in a couple of minutes. Hang on. Okay, no, it seems no more questions to you. Then I would say uh, thank you very much, Nick, Tillman and Chris, for your time and for your opinion about Deskdo. And uh, we are curious on seeing you using it in, in the next upcoming productions, whenever that may be. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank guys, you. for joining. Yeah, looking forward to your project. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Okay. Bye. And now, Matt and Bianca, um, we have some questions that were raised uh, in advance to, to this stream, and maybe we can go through the catalog now and, and answer them before we go into the questions that are coming in now into the, the live chat. Mm. And first of all, the question was about uh, fixture libraries and the DMX chart. Are they already available or how uh, will that work for the future? Yes, please, Bianca goes ahead because she's managing the project. So she's been in charge while all those questions are coming in. So I'd like to hand over to her. Yeah, we have already um, some libraries uh, for lighting consoles like uh, Grandom A2 and 3. Um, and the other ones, uh, yeah, we were develop developing time by time and they will be available at our uh, website in our download section. And the DMX card will also be available there at the website. And yeah, um, libraries for all the frequently used lighting consoles like Everlight, Genesis, um, yeah, Talk, Random A, and so on. Okay. For everybody who's interested, really now, they can send a mail over the uh, social media platforms or directly at beams um, at stopsandmops.com. And Stop yeah. yeah, and uh, Bianca will directly answer and send out uh, a star show um, uh, on the available lighting desks. And by the time we have multiple desks ready, we'll put them all on the download set. Okay, then let's go uh, to the question from the from the live chat. And Rhoda wants to know: um, so if you have one little desk, though, how many beams you can project with it? And what about the fact if you want a big count of these fixtures? Do you then need 50 projectors, for example? Is the I question didn't get of the last bit of it, Marcus. Can you repeat just the yeah. last part of the question? Um, if you want a big count of these features, do you then need 50 projectors, for example? I think this goes into the direction, how many beams can you create with one desk, though? Janka, would you like to answer technically, and I can put some artistically on it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, technically, you, we have uh, three lighting layers. Uh, in one desk beam that you can output at once. Um, then after that, you can put it, uh, put the output to the projector. But uh, how many projectors you want to use over a, a HDMI splitter, for example, it's in your turn. Um, yeah, but 50, um, for example, 50, 50 beams that will be 20, 20 decades, maybe. Yeah. We limited it, you know, to three beams coming out of one system. This one, on one hand, gets, um, you know, a performance insight. Um, secondly, every uh, library, if you look to the functions that we're going to show soon, the functions are always the same on each lighting layer. And that means you have a lot of possibilities, what you can do with one output. And if you think of um, uh, a generic spotlight, an intelligent spotlight, there's a lens system inside. It means the beam always goes through the same lens system. So if you only create one beam at a time, it doesn't matter if you have like three gobo wheels or 16 gobo wheels inside of a lighting picture. And, but we can deliver this coming individually controlled out of one lighting source, three individual layers. So individual controlled lighting beams. So that means you can do a mid-air effect while at the same time using a different output to light up your artist, for example. Okay. 
Uh, we have one comment that Bianca is not so easy to understand. Maybe we can look for the gain button, which we didn't find before, and, and raise up her microphone. Uh, while you're doing this, I will uh, come to another question from Tobias Buchwald. He wants to know, so you need for every Beamer one desk, though. Um, and I think it's clear. Yes, you need, you yeah. can, but you can split. You can, you get one HDMI signal out of one desk, though. But of course, you can use an HDMI splitter and uh, feed several projectors with one, with one yeah, desk. That's, that's another point you can do. I mean, it's, if we're feeding out a digital signal, means any kind of routing which is existing after that HDMI signal. When you're guessing off uh, big routings in the back or splitters or distributors or whatever it is, of course you can distribute the signal, but then you would have you know, the identical beam coming out of the different uh, lighting source. Okay. Then the base player wants to know, is there a source, a source to download the fixture files to see what to expect in your consoles? Can, you, can, I, can they already be downloaded somewhere? They're not on the download section yet because we're not open them up. You, you know, want to have make sure by the time we're, we're, we're shipping um, uh, the system, we'll make sure there's all the, you know, most famous lighting consoles are available at the same time, not starting just with one. But if you're interested, please send a mail or get in contact over the social media platforms and we'll send you the ones we have by the time. This means Grand A2, Grand A3 are available. And of course, the DMX chart as a PDF version is available to everybody. So um, I will put this onto the, the website very soon, or we can send it to you, Marcus, and you can distribute, especially the, the PDF um, over Mother Grid as well. Okay, yeah, not a bad idea. Leo Hermann wants to know, can we run one effect through multiple desk doors? Can you do what? Run a, an effect? If you can run one effect through multiple desk doors. I'm trying to uh, translate this question. Maybe he means while having something happening into the beam, that crosses and goes into another lighting source? Is that is that the, the question that's focusing at? I think so, yeah. This yeah. is also my idea. Basically, yeah. something like this is possible, yeah. Maybe not in the first version, because you want to make one thing for sure as well, because the guys, what they said, the, uh, the three designers we had on board here, as well as saying, you have so many possibilities, but we're trying to keep the, uh, the picture as accessible as possible for everybody. So it's very simple to use. It is not complex to use. I'm guessing what the guys are trying to say, your options are kind of unlimited what you can do within the beam, but it's not hard to operate, first of all. It's hard to understand when you, when you have unlimited possibilities what you can do with the beam. So what you actually want, design-wise, yeah. But the, uh, the way you operate it, it's, it's pretty simple. And um, so I'm not sure if you want to go across multiple beams lighting-wise as, yeah, this causes other effects, but it's, it's basically possible, yeah. We're thinking of this too. Okay. And another question from Leo Hermann is, how many DMX channels and is there only one DMX mode? Would you like to know? Yeah. At this time, there's only one DMX mode and we have these three lighting layers. Uh, that means 71 channels per layer and one master output with uh, 33 channels. So it's uh, 246 channels at all so half a universe when you patch all the layers of course you don't need to patch all your three layers if you like find those two layers you can get rid of one and save some channels but we made sure that two desktops fit onto uh, one universe and there's going to be a limited mode available in the future if you have not these many channels available or you're getting like i don't need this kind of effects layers i don't need to have the effects on colors for example don't need them then you can have um, a restricted picture but that's not going to be available right now. Okay. And then we have one last question for now from the base fly again. Is there, is there a limitation in the resolution? For example, when using one desktop for multiple projectors, is there a limitation in the resolution? It is. Um, the system itself is running on HD for now. This also is a, a performance-related Thing. But of course, we had it running multiple times with 4K projectors, for example, that of course interpolate your output and gives you even a smoother output. But we figured out that a 4K or higher resolution output is not truly needed. Maybe the user is uh, thinking of the idea of splitting the output into various sections and using one beam going into one section, another beam going into another section. 
possible. But then, it, then I guess it will be kind of hell to program. It's not imp impossible, but uh, yes, that's, that will be like more tricky to program. Okay. And already the next question from the base play. Um, will there be visualizer files for VisiVic or depends to program these fixtures without a, a desktop on the table? That was a question that was coming in several, several times from the lighting designers visiting us here for the demo mode. And uh, we are we're already working on this very, very closely. We'll have soon updates and news for all of you. But we know this is important to you, so we're working on it hardly. Okay. Um, and one question that also uh, raised up uh, in advance was, uh, can I use own, own content? Can I feed the desktop with own content, with, uh, with custom-made gobos, for example? Bianca, would you? Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, it's possible to to uh, yeah to to use your own own custom made gobos and and load it to the desktop uh, inside. Yes. And this is an important feature for any kind of moving light. You want to have your custom gobo, of course you can. Yes. Okay. Yeah, but we're not playing back content. Very important to you. This is a lighting fixture, first of all. So that means there is no like playback mode. Not at all. You don't play back anything. You can put gobos in digitally, yeah, but you can't play back a file. Okay, yes, also, so no playback of files, you can use gobos. Um, yeah, this were the questions so far. Maybe we can uh, uh, talk about the price. It will be 2,900 euros uh, net without taxes. This was also a question that was very often to read. And I think sure. now it's time we can uh, proceed to the hands-on and show our users Finally, how DeskDAO is used uh, with our Grandma 3. Yes, we can, if and you like to. Yes, I think this would be a good idea. Of course, this does not mean that you have to stop uh, asking questions, dear users, uh, dear viewers, <laughs> sorry. And, but now we can reveal the, the secret of the, the real-time editing of effects of the DeskDAO. <laughs> yeah, I would love to. Because it makes it so simple to explain then, yeah. So maybe I can ask, Bianca would go for the desk. She's much more experienced than I am in my old days. And uh, I would talk you through and uh, we'll see what we can do really from the, uh, the base beginning. Maybe I put some more haze in. We limited the haze that's not too foggy while we're having the interview. And now let's rise okay. up just a little bit. Give it a go, yeah. And then uh, We'll really take it from the scratch so everybody can follow up and see how easy it is and where the difference is to any kind of media server based system and where we do see the advantage as well as um, how it's somehow divided from the, uh, the analog market. So Bianca, would you please clear everything and we're really taking it from the scratch. So like everybody has seen it here. Scratch and another info, we have a Grandma 3, but we are in Grandma 2. You're running in Grandma 2 mode now, okay. Um, yeah, and for the lighting source, which is important to know and understand with Desto, as the Desto is, you know, an external uh, system, for, for now we're using here um, a Christie digital projector, which is a 6,500 um, Ansi Lumen um, DLP one chip projector. So it's quite um, um, affordable projector, but bright enough to light up for like an, uh, a club scenario uh, stage wise. And it, it, we're using it on an 0.9 lens. And of course, you know, this is important when you think of lighting as, as uh, smaller the lens gets. Of course, we're increasing light output there. Yeah? And we're using a pretty wide lens here to have some more opportunities. And the 6,500 lumen projector is not bright. We have tested this though, actually, from 6,500 or no, 150 lumens, to be honest. Yeah, that was the, the really tiny projector we're using. But that's big like a cigarette box. And we're going up to a 90,000 lumen projector here. Yeah? And these we're using with an 0.9 lens up to an 8.0 lens to see what differences you can output. So this is massively. So you can have the free choice with that fixture. What kind of light I'm going to use? It's going to be brighter, less bright, or wider from the lens point of view? Because as the bigger the projector gets, there is no yoke. There is no movement anymore. You cannot put it into a, a yoke and move it around if it's a bigger projector. But maybe you don't need to if the lens is wide enough. So let's take, give it a go. What would you expect with any lighting fixture you patch on your desk? When you press that button, please do so. A rounded white beam will be outputted 
from your device. This is what you expect first. And this was like a learning curve to ourselves because it, is, it, it wasn't the, the way it was now when we started the idea, but we figured out, hey, there is no need of putting a, like a rectangle uh, white output out of the, the projector. It, it doesn't help and it doesn't make it any better because you're again into the video world. You want to have a lighting fixture that, that reacts totally different. So this was a learning curve that took us like from October 2019 until today to always keep our minds open again and refocus onto lighting world rather than video. So this is what it does. You see a white beam coming out which fills like, I would say like 10% of the actually active area that the panel gives us. So please, Bianca, if you would be so kind and move it around and pan tilt. And now you see it really does what you would expect after you take it at full and you start spinning it around. So as long as your projector is bright enough yeah. and your lens is wide enough, you may can cover a complete stage or for sure the area that you would like to cover, depending on the brightness you would expect. Of course, there's zoom. So if Bianca would take the zoom and make it like double the amount, you see, all right, this is changing massively, but still rounded beam. It's still somehow positioned within pan tilt as she moved it there. Very simple. So next one up, color, of course. So she's changing color and you can do this while switching the mode from RGB into CMY, whatever your preferences are, maybe depending on your, your project, your, your production you're running in, if this is more like driven by RGB fixtures, LED wise, or if there are more CMY fixtures attached. And again, why does the library follow those restrictions or those, those guidelines of any kind of moving light? Because you want to clone, for example. You want to copy from a, from a, um, a spotlight into a desk. You want to copy your beam. You only can do this when the library gives you the uh, possibilities and the naming that follows the same guidelines, meaning Pantel, Frost, Zoom, Iris, Rotation, all those values, you know, got to focus on the same guidelines as any other moving light. Otherwise, you're not able to clone. And this is very, very important in our eyes. So after we've done that, that means, oh, there's an important thing I'd like to show you. How about let's do, let's store a couple of cues, like three cues, pan tilt wise. Let's make it a narrow beam um, and store three different cues at three different positions. Put them onto our stack of cues and then we go through them. Anytime Marcus jump in, if there's questions coming yeah. in that uh, somehow, sure. you know, up on what I'm, I'm telling here. So we can react directly. That's a, a question and answer. And we're here to answer all those questions. And we're also open for critics. You know, we're, uh, we know that we're on an early start of, of trying something out and creative idea and a vision of we're, we're sure when we're, we're not perfect yet, um, but we're, we've done something completely new. As you see now, Bianca is jumping through this queue. This was like, how many fate time you put in it? Zero. Zero. So that's, that's important because that means there is no move in black anymore. You know, we can, we can change step by step in like zero seconds. It's, it's not zero mm. because that projector is running with a free refresh rate. In this case, it's 60 Hertz, right? Yeah. We're running on 60 Hertz means this is a 16th of a second. We're changing position. And of course we can change everything that we can change within a desktop. If it's going to be a, a, a global, a color, a position within 60 of a second or whatever the projector is offering. And uh, we know that we, we tried it on projectors uh, within uh, special versions going up to 120 hertz, for example. And now she's putting in, why not go between um, Q2 and 3 with like 0 0.1 seconds of fade time. 0 0.1. So that's really less. And then let's take the next step with 0.5 and one with a second. So we have three different fade times, one a second, one half a second, and one for 10 milliseconds. And uh, you can, again, see the clear difference while this has been fading from the desk. So that was the second, right? That was half a second. That was half a second. A it's second. a second of fade. That's <laughs> 0 0.1, point. yeah. You can, um, I mean, I don't know how, how accurate this comes over the screen, but if you see it for here, for real, it's already making a difference if you put like 0 0.1 uh, seconds of fade time. Mm -hmm. But that means you can really, can we really fast 
or you can be slow and gentle. So most importantly, let's take in uh, Gobos forms. And as with digital, imagine all the Gobos you loved, and if there's anything, we're, you know, we're rising the stack all the time now already before we're shipping. But that's like, we basically could fit, fit in like 65,000 um, different Gobos if you wanted to. That would be fairly too much, but uh, we're starting 000. off with a couple of thousands, yeah, maybe. So she's now putting in uh, different Gobos. Let's, let's make them a little larger that people can see them better in the, in the, in the stream. Maybe you put in like a, let's take it down a little bit in tilt. Yes, that will be good. That's a bar gobo with the several bars. Let's take it down in tilt just a little. Yeah, fine. There's another thing about uh, light that comes out of a digital projector. It is very, very focused. And it's focused from the beginning where it starts off from the lens till its final end. It is not focused throughout the whole way but it's, it's far more focused than any other lens system that goes out. Very, very focused light. If you don't like focused light, you can also go for the projector and focus the projector right from the start. So you always have soft views. Um, if not, keep it focused. There's a digital frost inside as well. So now we have that Gobo in once. Um, Bianca's gonna go for rotation. And rotation works the same way as it does with any other fixture. There's index, and there's continuously rotation, left and right. Same way as with any other fixture. So you can clone, you can create your preset stacks, your star shows, everything. Okay, let's zoom that thing a little smaller, please. Let me see how it looks like here in the stream. Oh, you can see that the bars are spinning. Nice. Okay. Digital frost. As you don't want to be, want to be sharpened, you want to have unsharpened frosted beams. So let's take some digital frost inside. And as you can see now, it gets soft as well. And that's very important. As you've been seeing the, the light of a projector once, you can be so sharp. It's, it's kind of a laser effect. But of course, you can make it very bold, very soft. But we come to that point afterwards. So um, after we have rotation, is there any questions that are coming in? By now that I should. I think Hartmut Asphalt's question is answered. He asks uh, 50 frames per second, but you, you talked about that already that you have uh, one, uh, you're running on 60 hertz, but you can go yeah. up to 120 hertz. Yeah, not with this version of Desto, will only support 50 and 60, yeah, to make it very, very, very performant. Um, um, but for the uh, for version, if somebody's interested in a version of running it in higher hertz rate, it is basically possible. Okay. Um, let's take the beam even smaller. So maybe half size of, of what we're having now. Yes, that will do. And now let's take a prism. In. So there's functions like prism, like you've been used to. She's putting like a three point. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a three prism. All you can see very clearly here on the, uh, in the stream. That's nice. So uh, Gobo is still spinning continuously, and we have the prism. So what would you expect from prism? Of course, you can still scale. Scale the whole prism a little smaller. So we're now scaling the prism instead of the, uh, the Gobo itself. So those um, Gobos are coming closer as we're, as we're smaller. We're zooming the prism rather than the Gobo itself. So spin the prism, prism rotation, left, right, index continuously, again. Let's spin it somehow gently, continuously, yeah, that's fine. So Gobo is rotating, prism is spinning. So as we're digital again, there, now let's leave some limitations, I would say. Let's put in um, a 20 sevens. Prism. <laughs> ah, there's one question. How many Ansi Lumen has the projector? Could you 6, mention? 6,500 in our case here. Oh, yeah. Julian yeah. also answered. 6,500, yeah. Thanks, Julian, for answering. Um, so now she put, 
27 prism in, so it's quite a lot of them already. Let's make the gobo smaller so we can see that they are separated. Maybe we can change the gobo into line. Yeah, maybe change the gobo into one line rather than so many at the same time. Yeah. So we can see a little clearer. Yeah. So now we have a single line gobo, <laughs> 27 times orientated in a rounded prism while the prism is spinning and the gobo is spinning too. Of course, it keeps all those values. You know, it, it, it's acting like a standard lighting fixture. Um, zoom in a little bigger, please. The prism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we can see. Yes. That's nice. Um, maybe Timo, we can look from the front. Thank you. So now we see this. Let's make the Gobo, the bar Gobo, a little smaller. Mm. Nice. So now we can see as those bar Gobos are rotating, going around with the prism. And now let's change orientation of the prism. Again, a feature which has never been before because of the mechanical limitations. She's taking the prism while it's been still rounded, and she's randomizing the orientation of the prism. Randomize? Yeah, let's randomize the orientation okay. first, yeah. So all those bar gobos will leave their position and going into a random position somewhere in the output, as you can see, yeah. And this is a fadeable channel that you can access, yeah. And she's still going, she's going back and forth by now, so that means object, the gobo, is going into a randomized positioning in space and going back into the rounded prism. By why rounded? We're digital. Come on, let's take a let's take it to a, um, a triangle. And now we have already left the possibilities that you <laughs> we left them already by far. Yeah, that I you had yeah. with. Uh... Yeah, and, I, and I'm always taking it slowly because I know you know I don't want to I want to wait. Everybody can follow up so. Now, it's a triangle gobo. You put a triangle gobo in. That's fine, too. It's a triangle gobo. I want to have the prism, which is still rounded, to be a triangle. Let's take it. No, leave, leave it in. Leave the triangle in. I like the triangle. So it's triangle gobo into a triangle prism setup. We have one request from Julian Reverse. He asks yes, if, if it's possible to simulate, for example, a three-lens output instead of a prism effect. Uh, a three-lens output? Yeah. I think uh, I think he talks about the three beams that are uh, possible with the desk, though. And what should I do? I should do this one again while limiting the uh, the, the object, or maybe we can ask him, Julian. What uh, can you specify what? your request yeah. a little bit? We are, we love to try it. Now, it's, it, maybe it's it's a little as you can see now. Now it's a it's a prism triangle with twenty seven triangles which are rotating, going around. <laughs> Maybe let's make 15 out of them, and you can see it much clearer. So now we have 15 triangle gobos going in a triangle prisma, which is rotating. <laughs> let's do three. Let's do three again. Then we have the effect that we've been spoken before. Yeah, exactly. Julian wants to see uh, three single beams. Okay. Yes. Let's do this. Three um, triangle. Three triangle gobos <laughs> coming out of a triangle prisma, <laughs> three at a time, only three. But we could, what we have seen now would be here possible. We, here we have three. And now we have three. Three triangles in a triangle prisma, <laughs> rotating. <laughs> is, that, is that correct? We can make him small, smaller, larger. I think uh, he's out for the three beams that can be created with the desk. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, let's do this. Let's do this next, okay? So let's go back, Bianca. Let's go back and do uh, multiple. Let's, let's take 15 again, please. 15 triangles <laughs> rotating in a triangle without um, randomization in the triangle prism. Let's make them a little large, a little more. Let me see the triangle clearly. Yeah, that's fine. And more triangles. More, 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 more. Stop. That's fine. So now we have, have our triangles rotating, blah, 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 blah. Don't say it again. So let's take them red. We colorize them quickly. Let's say blue. Make them a little brighter here in the camera. That's fine. Okay, that's fine. And yeah, that will work out. 
Okay, and now create another beam. That's what it's about, you know. Create another beam, another lighting layer in white at full, right in the middle of it. So here we have a new layer, a new lighting beam coming out while the other one, you know, is already parked. It's like, you know, we don't park it, but it's like, it's not a programmer. It's an individual control beam coming out of there. And uh, as I said, cloning, but uh, first of all, let's make this one frosted to show something which is impossible with any other lighting source because we can create this two oxymoron, which is be frosted and unfrosted at the same time, sharpened and unsharpened. So she, she's now creating a frost beam in yellow, please. So this yellow frosted beam comes out of in the middle of that triangle, spinning in a triangle prism, <laughs> and it's completely individual control. Let's do Pant Hill of that one again. Of course, yeah, you, know, you can use everything that the desk is capable of, meaning effects engine in Pant Hill. You can um, synchronize these two beams. You can put them on different directions, whatever you like to. Every you know, thing that I'm showing by now is, of course, individually controlled, can be stacked up in queues, can be used in effects, all of it like you've been used to. Do they show up as three different fixtures in the library of the, of the console? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. that's, that's how you can patch them singly. So that means if you're not going to need the three of them and you want to have, you know, sparing some channels or whatever, you can only patch two or just one if you're fine with it. And I'm only, you know, I'm only scratching on the surface of the capabilities of desktop by now because I don't want to put anybody in fear what is, what is possible um, uh, or too excited what is possible about the, uh, the desktop. That's just, as we're, we're having an, uh, a layer which is called effect that I didn't use by now. Hmm. And this effects layer and, uh, works, on, works on the shapes, on the gobos, and it hmm. works on color as well. Mm -hmm. And it has like an effect that you put on, and the effect is adjustable over four different encoders, for example. Mm -hmm. And that means you have hundreds of effects you can use, basically, on those beams again. Yeah. Now we're just only using gobos and rotations, but that's the standard. Uh, possibility. Yes, if you could leave this picture for a second, we have uh, a question from Kages, who uh, tuned in a little later, and he asks, "What is this running off?" And this is to show you the desk, though. This is the the little box where it all comes out. It's basically uh, ArtNet in SACN will follow. We didn't mention that so far. True. It's MANet two. Yeah, MA we're working two. on it. And it gives out an HDMI signal. You can attach at, attach any projector to. So this is the new hot shit we are talking about right now at the moment for those who tuned in a little later. I hope this uh, answers the question. Yeah, um, it's like when thinking of it, maybe you can, you can call it like the brain of your, of your light source. So the light source can be any digital projector, anything where you can feed the signal in. Yeah, whatever you have, you already own or you like to rent. And uh, the little box, the brain, the desktop behaves like a lighting picture in the fashion to your desk. Bianca, why don't you, let's, let's show um, a, one color effect, for example. Let's take the middle beam, let's make it sharpen again, the yellow beam in the middle. Let's make it white again, and let's take um, a multi-color effect, like um, color edge. So she's going for like this effect um, layer, taking the channels and put a, um, an effect in, but staying on the same beam. And now she's asked multicolor inside. Let's change to two colors that we can clearly see here in the screen. It's a red inside now. Oh, now it's a yellow outside and it's a red inside. Put the uh, it looks like inside. candy. Yeah, let's take the bright one inside. Now, now you can see you have a yellow a bit living. It's the same beam. It's not a new beam coming in. So we only have two layers of light running in the moment. Let's put this one um, pantil wise a little lower. Yes, that's fine. Um, and now let's change with your um, parameters you can control of the color effect, its behavior. So that means she can change size of the inner color depending onto the outer color, if it's larger or smaller. And that lives on the same beam. So please, let's make it like 50-50. And you can fade it in the effect. So the effect is like, Kind of 50-50, yellow inside, um, red outside. Let's put prism again, again in, and let's, let's take it really like a multiple, whatever, 70-something. Um, 
really a lot of them. The next question is, uh, what is the file format of the digital gobos? Is it PNG or JPEG or what is it? There's going to be various uh, formats available. We're still working on it. We're, not, we're unsure if we know, like PNG will be a really uh, famous format to use because you want to have your alpha channels, for example, because you want to have like the free floating gobo like you've been used to. So that's, that's pretty obvious, yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's also uh, 3D formats, which we supported because our forms, and I'm only by now showing you Beam. And, uh, but of course, I mean, if you would stand on the other side of the projector, It's a projection, so you can use it also um, to project on something. You don't need to just only create beams out of it. And that means um, we are also supporting 3D formats. Um, so you can put in 3D formats of uh, various uh, ways um, to also do projection. And Bianca is now putting in multiple of this um, um, dot living in the, with the color effect. And let's, let's rotate this one and put a, a randomizer on it. And let's get rid of the blue beam for once. As this is mixing it up quite a lot here. So now we have it here. You see, um, you got multiple beams coming out. And that's one lighting layer. So that's why we're knowing to give somebody like 10 lighting layers would be far too much yeah, for the start of it. Because you can do so much with just one lighting layer. If you're using effects, you're using the prism, you're using all these multiples that are possible. And so therefore, three lighting layers are really far a lot what you can do. And as I said earlier, think of the possibilities by lighting up an artist with one beam and using the other one for midair effect at the same time. Okay. Which is uh, um, a purpose that is quite obvious, yeah. So now we have another request from PM. Uh, is a strobe effect possible? If yes, oh, yeah. could you show us the fastest mode? Okay, yes, please. Let's do this. Uh, let's take a white beam for this. Leave, your, leave all your stuff in. Bianca, what you have going in your beam. And let's take the randomizer out and let's make like a no gobo inside, um, rounded prism, a little larger, and stop rotation so we can see those segmented beams. And let's do it in white. Let's give Bianca a second. I'm pretty fast here. I'm dictating all this. And... Uh, so we're going to show you that strobe is not just only what you've been used to be. In strobe, we have multiple strobes. Uh, let's make uh, go a little smaller. Uh, fit a little bigger, a little bigger. So, and let's take a look from the front. And maybe you can take it down just a little, hand tilt wise. Take it down, take it down, take it down. That's fine. So let's now let's strobe. Let's strobe. Uh, first of all, let's just simply strobe and fast. I want to see how fast it can strobe. And um, no full strobe, no fast, just full strobe. We're starting with this full strobe. And um, simple to say, I mean, it's, it's 60 hertz we're going. And if you will still recognize that strobe, that means you got to stay somewhere in between of that 60 seconds per frame. Otherwise, you cannot strobe anymore. And also, it's up to the stream. I don't know how this transports here over the internet. Oh, quite well, I think. Okay. So after you now seeing that, that, that strobe in, in various speeds, of course, it can like ramp dim, as you can see now, as you've been used to with lighting pictures as well. And then we have several other options, Bianca. So if you make and show all the other macro options that we have on strobe, like the directional strobe, Because if you now have your prism already in, and you know how many, um, how many multiples you have, you can use the strobe to spin within your prism, for example. Is the, is the number of prisms limited, by the way? Yeah, 255 by now. It's quite fair enough. But no, <laughs> no it's not limited. No, not at all. We are, we're still thinking of curves. Like, if you have you know, like a really bright projector in 4K, for example, and you make really, really thin beams, like a sparkle beam setup, yeah? And you, you divide them like in this randomization. You can do, you know, thousands of sparkling beams into the air. So it, it, we, we have a curve on those parameters, thinking of like an 8-bit channel, you know. And this 8-bit channel doesn't go from 0 to 255. It goes 0 to 255 while transporting the signal. But within the desktop, we're interpreting this, this signal as saying uh, 255 is like 2,000 multiplicators of prism, for example. Yeah. Possibly. 
Yeah, dear viewers, if you have any uh, recommendations what should be displayed on the projector, just give us a hint. Um, is it possible to put a prism on a prism? Is the next question. <laughs> <laughs> Great, I love that. I love that. Thank you. Um, yes, it is possible. You would, you would do it this way. You take your lighting layer, yeah, where you have your prism and you have your triangle spinning in. And like Bianca mentioned before, there's like a master layer. There's a master layer that's sitting on top of each of that three layers. And the purpose of that master layer basically is functions. So that master layer is used, for example, think of you want to colorize everything that goes through your beams. And you don't want to colorize your three individual beams. You want to colorize them all at once. You can take that master layer that goes on top of them and you can colorize everything at the same time. Or example is you're traveling on a worldwide tour to a club tour, for example, and you have various lens outputs every day and you want to scale your show because like an 0.0 lens is not available in the country you're going this time yeah, or the, the city. So what you do is you take your output and you scale your output like down to 80%, but everything that lives underneath the output, so your three different lighting layers will be scaled at once. But the output layer features all the effects basically that uh, the layer is featuring itself. Means you could do a prism into your output layer and prismize everything that comes from the three different lighting layers. Possible. Okay. Yes, any other wishes? What you would like to see? And you see, Bianca is now playing around with the beam. She now created one, um, one lighting layer in white, the strobe um, that goes in a strobe macro around, around the prisma, no gobo inside. And she cloned that layer onto a second lighting layer that goes the opposite direction in blue. So maybe, Bianca, you can take that um, blue one, make it far larger and softer, for example, and randomize it. Ah, here, next question is about the, uh, the maximum resolution of the desk door. Um, the desk door itself, no, the, the desk door beam, as you see it here, the brick goes up to HD. So 1920, 1080. Okay. But of course, like I said before, if you attach this one to a projector, which we've done several times, like a 4K projector, the projector itself will interpolate the signal that comes in. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to worry on higher resolutions. So now Bianca changed. Now let's change colors. Let's take this one in, in white, uh, the soft one. And let's take the sharp one in like yellow or any other color. So you can see the difference that she now has a soft beam going um, counterclockwise. And then she has that sharpened beam going in yellow, sharpened at the same time. And now she's changing color. Uh, yeah, yeah, red is a bit dark for the stream. Yellow is better, yeah. And now let's change pan tilt of that two beams so that everybody can see how you can be white them. So it's taking one beam to the left and the other beam a little far to the right. And that's how they're individual control, pan tilt wise. And now let's clone the sharpened layer, the yellow layer, onto the third. So we're cloning this one. So we're creating an identical output. Let's do this one in white again. And let's make it really sparkly. So white, tiny output, tiny, tiny beams. And then take a randomizer inside that they're going everywhere. Oh. And let's take a lot of them. This is a good keyboard everywhere. There's another question now. What happens if you move the beam beyond the screen borders? <laughs> yes. There are two options here that are available. First of all, of course, what you want to do is like, for example, imagine you want to have the beam coming from nowhere, from the blackout, and entering the visible area. So this is possible. You can go outside the visible area, first of all. So you can go outside and you come, then you come across the visible area. Secondly, there will be an option where you are not allowed to uh, leave those borders. So meaning whatever you do, if you zoom to a certain range, you're not allowed to leave the border, to stay within the border. That's something you're thinking of, to limit people within the border. But it doesn't make sense all of the time. So, but we're playing around with limiting people to border, or basically this, the standard mode is go wherever you want. You can stay within, or you can go without. Okay, and we've had this one before. And do it uh, white, Bianca. There's one that's sparkling. Do this one white because we have that sparkling effect going really inside the camera. It's blue now. So you see there's a, there's a 
there's a strobe effect going onto a layer with a lot of beams which are randomized in a rotating prism. And I have quite a lot of them. Okay, we have another question. We've had this one before. Um, how many DMX channels and if there is more than one DMX mode? I remember it's around about half a universe of DMX it's channels. It's half a universe. Yeah, it's close to half a universe to make sure even if you would change, but we're not going to change. You know, the, the picture library is, is fixed for now. Um, so it's half a universe if you patch all reading layers, including the master layer that goes on top of the global um, influencer. Yeah. You don't need to patch all of them. If you do, two destos fit on one universe. And you have plans for uh, like a simpler, a more simple mode. Yeah, and we have plans for a simple mode. If like maybe, for example, your desk doesn't feed um, or supports that many channels, yeah, parameters, for example, or you have a limited desk, you want to have access to the dough as well, then we make sure that there's a simple mode not featuring all the effects. And uh, we're still working on thinking and, and speaking to the designers about what kind of functions to get rid of for the simple mode. Yes. Okay, great. Are there any more questions? Now is your time. Maybe in the meantime, waiting, I can I can say a little bit more about the lighting source because that's that's quite important, I, I think. Um, um, and as as we spoken earlier, uh, there's there's people who invented uh, the first really digital lights, like uh, high end systems, and um, in in our um, in our time, there's for example people like Robe who have um, uh, really outcoming new light, digital lighting fixtures, yeah. And uh, we, have, we have big respect for those people uh, who've done the first digital lighting fixtures. The thing is here that you have that outsource brick that's your brain that you can attach to any kind of um, existing digital projector. And that means you can really use various projectors. And for anybody, I mean, sitting here in our office, we have like a distance of like five meters here to the projector. You see how bright that one already is. Even brighter would not have been supported by the cameras inside of here. And that's 6,500 lumens. So while testing our system in um, a, a bigger environment, like an arena, we figured out that around 20,000 ANSI lumens is, is in a fairly amount to compete with other spotlights in the same environment. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, we tested already, you know, there's a lot of projectors which are available in the, uh, in the 30,000 range, 40,000, even 50,000. And above the 40,000 range, this is brighter than uh, basically any standard spotlight, you know, not like um, a Sharpie, for example, that's not have that focus beam. But it's all depending on the lens you're using. So if you're using like a, a 30 or 40,000 projector and you put like an 8.0 lens inside in an arena, that kills you, you know. So um, arena shows to support a wide angle would be like maybe a 1.4, a 1.2 lens. And if you've seen that video that we created in Berlin called the Berlin Session, you were using a 1.4 to 1.6 lens on a 30, uh, 34,000 lumen projector. And that was flooding the whole venue. And it was a long venue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and it was really, really bright. Okay, we have another question from Varla M. Can you put the three beams next to each other, not stacked on top, or is it possible to duplicate or multiply uh -huh. the beam? We've had that Bravo. already, but yes. No, it's, it's a great question because she's, uh, uh, it, it was a woman, right? Asking, uh, asking a question, did I get it right? Um, yes, what is she? I think so, yes. Okay. From Finland, maybe. Um, yeah, great to have women uh, within this industry uh, working on, on beams. I, I hope so, to be needing beams here. Um, um, what you can do is it's about multiplying those beams or dividing those beams. So you have you have different ways. Bianca's building this, I guess, here right now. Um, you have various ways where you can select. What do you want? Do you want to multiply your beams while they come across each other? Do you want to subtract them? Yeah. Or how do you want to combine them? There are several modes. We're soon going to release a video that's a manual video where you can see how those functions are being controlled. And there you can see that there's multiple ways to even exclude them. So meaning one beam, a beam goes across another, and by the time it's crossing it, it's excluding it. So you can create black holes in your beams. Possible. For example, that the use of that will be that you have like a backlight following your artist. I mean, guessing 
you have pan tilt and we're guessing you have a tracker on your stage. You're tracking an artist. Yeah, the artist is tracked auto track. The projector is focusing the full range of the, the stage. The uh, artist is running around and uh, a, a backlight beam is following him all the time. And you want to make sure while outputting mid-air effects out of the different lighting layers, you don't want to override this picture that is lighting up your artist. So you would use that mode that excludes or puts that layer on top of everything else and not being affected by multiplying colors or beams but that the, uh, that the artist is uh, lit up straight all the time. Possible, yes, you can, you can choose. Okay, great. Yes, one hour of desk though is over and <laughs> it, this was really very interesting and I think uh, that all the questions that were raised in the last days have now been answered. If there are any questions left now, it's the last few minutes to post them here. Otherwise, of course, you have always the chance to contact the Stops and Bobs team for further information. And you will also have uh, like a, a shooting range for your desk, though, which you are preparing right now at the moment, Matt, where everybody can remote control a desk system from, from home. Yes. <laughs> yes, we, uh, we had, you know, we were watching uh, the comments. And like, like I said, you know, we're really, really open. You know, we're only at the start of an idea of a vision. And we're, we're listening to, to everybody, even if it's, you know, good or bad. And we're trying to make our best out of this product. And we figured out that there's, of course, a lot of questions coming. Can I try it? Can I have the demo? Can I have hands on myself? And as we only manufactured 20 handmade first um, production series testers, and we're waiting for the new batch coming in, but it will take a little while. So that means um, there's only 14 out, and these 14s are out with, with several designers testing them. And there's that, that there's this one opportunity. If you live close to a designer, maybe they can help you out and giving you a, a demo if possible. But in Corona times, this is hard. So we had the idea by now we're building like a miniature stage. Um, and this miniature stage is feeding, um, um, featuring 150 lumen projectors. So really, really small. And we built a web-based controller. And this web-based controller is controlling a Grand MA lighting console. And it's only featuring a couple of channels that you use to make it a little more simple for you to use. And everybody can um, reach out for uh, a scheduling a date with us to try this out. And that's going to be very soon. We'll put this online very, very soon. So everybody, we can unfortunately not yet satisfy with having hands on a, on a real dough. Um, they can have a remote virtually session with desk dough for an hour, line up for a, a date, schedule a date, 24 hours around the clock, and then with a couple of values they can control hands-on and can change beams and can be a, yeah, bake some beams. And, and just to get the right, I don't need a console myself. No, I no can... you don't need a console. You log in. Um, we're soon going to release that. Maybe you can uh, help us while giving this link out over Mother Grid as well. There's going to be a link where you go on, onto a website. Um, you ask for a, a scheduled date. You can see a calendar with all the hours of the day. You schedule your one hour when you'll be available and you like to do it. And there's a free slot. You take that slot, and by the time the slot comes online, you have an access code. And with that access code, you log into our system, and you have that, uh, that uh, MOPS controller, the, the MOPS commander, how we call it, our own lighting desk. And you see how the MOPS commander is controlling um, a Grand MA. And this one is controlling a desk, though. And that little beamer is outputting a beam. There's some haze in the room, and you can try it out yourself. It's limited, I know, but it's really hard to control a picture like this you know, over the internet with a, a real lighting console and not everybody is up to a uh, grand MA. there's other consoles out there as well so that means we created a, a really simple control first of all to have like a limited but first kind of hands-on and maybe we are expand this idea um, before we're all you know hoping that uh, we're all going to get well soon just come overcome overcome this pandemic and be able to real demo and maybe real trade shows where everybody can try a desktop yes that's what we all are hoping for. Now, there's one last question. How many different prisms is there? We talked about that uh, once again. It's 255 prisms per beam. Basically, yes. They're not in there yet. Yeah. But basically, yeah. it's like it's like a form. Think of the Google. And so we can put in basically 255 prisms. But uh, by now, I don't know, Bianca, how many prisms we got in by now? Maybe six or seven? Okay. Yeah. Like line prism, triangle prism, rounded prism. Yeah. Star Prism, yeah, but we're, by the time, you know, we're shipping, it's going to be a few more. Okay, great. So, there are no more questions. 
And I would say it's uh, good for now. We've had a really cool presentation of the desk, though. And I say many thanks to Bianca Mischinger and Matt Finke from Stops and Mobs. Bianca did the the the, the console program. She's the boss, you know. She's the boss. I'm just, you know, one of the guys had the idea, and uh, you know, I'm I'm trying to talk people through, as you can see in here. Um, yeah, thank you, and uh, yeah, please excuse my passion that's in there. That's so much of a passion in there. After we've seen that, this idea is. Uh, for us very very special and uh so yeah thanks everybody for watching and bianca is the boss so if you have any questions bianca is leading the project and she will be in charge i think okay so if you have any questions get in touch with bianca mishinger from stops and mobs and i say many thanks for watching and uh, asking so many questions and yeah thanks again to bianca and matt from stops and mobs and early in this video we had the chance to speak to nick evers chris glator and tillman schumacher who were first our users and uh, gave us some inside views in their experiences. And if you like the video, please uh, give me a thumb up or subscribe to my channel. That would be great. And I'm looking forward to see you again in the next videos. Have a nice day. Good. Thanks, Marcus. <laughs> okay. Bye. Once again, Matt and Bianca. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks, Timo, for mixing the whole live stream. <laughs> yeah. Thank. Thanks to the whole Stops and Mobs crew. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.